something that we don't see that much, but we should probably talk about. <laughs> um, virologic failure. Dan, you are I, obviously a world's expert in this, um, uh, uh, but, but maybe even world's experts get a little rusty when we don't yeah, see it too much. Right. So I, you know, I think the first <laughs> thing is, is how do we define virologic yeah, that's failure? A good point, right? sure. what, what do we mean when we talk about virologic failure? And I think it depends if you're just starting or if you're already on treatment, right? So if you're starting on treatment and you don't see a, a log or, or two log reduction, uh, you know, 10 or 100 fold reduction in virus load over the first couple of weeks or month of therapy, then there's a problem. And right. that, that should already be considered virologic failure. Somebody who never gets to being fully suppressed is also virologic failure. But if you are suppressed and you've been doing just fine, and now you start to have uh, consistently detectable uh, uh, virus in the, in the blood, then that is probably virologic failure. And I say probably because if it's very low oh, numbers, right. if it's just above the threshold of detection in the assay, that, for complicated reasons we won't go into now, is probably not really virologic failure. But if you're up in the hundreds, thousands, certainly, then, then you've failed. And so then the question is, why did the patient fail therapy? Or why is this therapy failing the patient? And I think you really have to start by talking to the patient to ask them in as open-ended and non-judgmental a way as you can uh, how, what their pattern of adherence is. What I usually do is say, you know, in a typical month, uh, how many times do you think you might miss a dose or forget to take a dose? Not how many times aren't you taking your medicine? <laughs> right. and, 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 or, or find out what, what's happened in your life recently. Uh, that is there something that's changed that's made it harder for you to take your medicine or the patient may come in and say, you know, I went to the pharmacy and they just, they wouldn't refill my drug, but I had uh, lost it. And I, I, so I was only on the one drug uh, for oh, the last uh, yeah. two yeah, weeks. Yeah, and yeah. so you really have to understand why they failed. Because now once you understand why they failed, you, you're going to be in a much better position to fix it. So for fixing it, even though we often don't see resistance anymore, I would still get a resistance oh, test unequivocally, just right. to know what your options are. And then you have to determine, uh, was it just a, a, um, a, a sort of um, a logistics issue that pr created the, the problem, or was there something about the regimen that the, wasn't suiting the patient and that a different regimen would be better suited? And so a, a, a switch in regimen, even if there's no resistance, might make a difference. Sure. We, Eric, it, it, when, when we do get a resistance test and we see resistance, um, uh, to me it almost seems like maybe we, so we can have something to do. That, that, that's probably a worthwhile time to discuss it with a, someone who has HIV expertise as their kind of full-time job or... What would you say? Yeah, no, I would agree. I mean, this is now, this is an unusual scenario. So for young providers, they have very little experience in managing resistance. Yeah. And, and I think most people are aware of what Dan just talked about, but it is the most important thing. This person is an outlier. Something went very wrong, and it's not because the drugs weren't potent. Right. And you really need to understand right. what right. went wrong before right. you can sort of take the next step. And then I think that we do need, you need an expert involved. We have a lot more data than we used to inform our decisions about managing people with treatment failure. Right. And there's even new data recently. It's Traditionally, it's always been a boosted PI path. Right. Now there's even data that there may be a subset of people that you can use an integrase, like dolutegravir, mm -hmm. uh, in a, a relatively simple regimen for first-line failures with limited resistance. Yeah. So I do think you, know, you need to get expert input. Great. Great. Um, anything else in, in your uh, practice in terms of virologic failure? Any other um, uh, points that you would make in terms of um, uh, either um, uh, yeah. sussing out why it happened or? or um, no, but the one thing I think about that it brings me back a little bit to the discussion we were having about switching. Um, there are simple switches and there's complicated yeah, switches. Yeah, good point. That's it. We should. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's and good that to touch it on. It is that. when with this, you know, we we do the simple switches so often now. Meaning these people have just done great on their first regimen, and now you know maybe move them from TDF to TAF or move them to a single tablet regimen. Um, but we do have a lot of people in our clinics who had had previous virologic failure who are now stably suppressed, and I think one of the mistakes that young clinicians make is not considering what underlying resistance may exist before mm -hmm. they think mm -hmm. about the simple mm -hmm. switch. And so dolutegravir pivirine, for example, where we have this huge new data set that really informs a switch decision, was studied in a very pristine population of people with right. no, no history of virologic right. failure, and right. that's currently what's approved for. So I think that people just need to make sure before they do a switch that they do think about previous failure. 
yeah. and what underlying resistance patterns may exist, and again, rely on experts if yeah. you're gonna switch those people. Yeah, I think that we, that was really something to, that, that get the old resistance tests, try to get as much history as possible um, when you're gonna make a, a more complicated switch. I think that's a, that's a really important lesson. Yeah, I mean, for us, that requires going to medical records and pulling out this paper chart right. <laughs> that's this yeah. thick and going through page by page to get those old genotypes, but yeah. we do it's have hard. to do it. It's yeah. hard, yeah. yeah. That's, hard. That, that's real, yeah, that's something that, again, uh, and, and, and someone that has maybe two or even three class resistance, sometimes they can be simplified, but, but that's really Often. something that yeah. should be done with incredible care. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's right. And, and then just uh, to follow up, the, when you do make a switch to someone for reasons of virologic failure, and even I think even relatively simple switches, I do tend to get the person back you know, in that same kind of four to six week time point to first of all, make sure it all went right and they understood what I said. And, and to confirm that their viral load is either staying suppressed or back on their way down, I think that's important.